Mm. How is everything? Fine, fine, fine. And thanks for having me. Yeah, I mean, we need to have these conversations about how people can actually like people who want to leave the country can actually leave the country and blossom well. A uh, few days ago, I said I was done with London girls, so now I'm actually focused on Canadian women. Okay. And I hope that in this live video, I'll be able to understand how I can actually get a Canadian babe in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm, okay. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Don't mind me. Anyway, so I know very well that you actually have this um, company, you know, that help people to, like, migrate to Canada. So what, like, what is the company about? Just, you know, tell, tell us. Tell us what the company Tell us about yourself. What's the company about? So that people would understand the you know, the framework on which the conversation would be in. All right. So thanks. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Buki Abanwanda. I am the principal consultant at Shira Migration um, and the Shira company. We have two different divisions right now, which is Shira Migration and Shira Tutors. Shira Migration deals with anything Canadian immigration only. Um, so if you're looking to come and we're licensed by the ICCRC here in Canada. So you can trust us that we're delivering our service with um, with the IS professionalism um, because we're regulated um, in this field. And then we have Shira Tutors for those who are interested in prepping for the IELTS or the French exam, which has become important um, right now towards the immigration journey. So I'll be letting you know more of what that means and what we do in detail as we go along. Okay, so so just to to still put a little context, do you guys help help with visa? No. Yes, so we study help visa. with study visas. We help with visitors visas. We help with permanent residency. We help with even admission for those who want to go for admission to school. We help with um, anything except for refugees. Any other thing, business migration, um, anything at all, immigration wise family sponsorship, spousal sponsorship, let's say you're already in Canada. So let's say your Canadian baby is already in Canada in mm -hmm. this case, and she's trying to sponsor you to come. So she's going to use the spousal sponsorship to bring you to Canada, you know, so which means that you don't need to start writing IELTS like, you know, some people because you will just get, mm -hmm. you know, free, free pot into Canada, basically. Okay. I like that example about my, my Canadian baby. I want to say London baby, God will not shame me. Anyway, um, so there's just been this whole hype about Canada. Canada, a lot of people are relocating. Last year, up to 10 people that I know who are very close to me relocated to Canada. Like a lot of people are talking about relocating to Canada. So more than just the hype, like can you give us facts about why Canada is such a great place for people to actually migrate from, to like Africans, Nigerians? So, I mean, the hype is real, you know, because there was a time when I remember in 2017 was when I got started. Um, even then I was just helping people because I was already in Canada. I was already a permanent resident. So I had friends on Facebook who were just trying to get help. And I was just helping people, providing information I knew. And I was just like, oh, no, I don't even want to go to this province because that was the province available. You know, I want to go to the popping province or to a popular province. And then all of a sudden they changed the system. So they changed the system in 2015 from, you know, the regular paper-based application, which catered more to the older folks. So people who were in their late 30s and early 40s were the people who were targeted mostly. But then they realized, okay, we need the younger folks because these are the people that would acclimatize into the system a lot faster and would likely stay for longer. So they now change it in such a way that a 23-year-old, a 22-year-old with three years work experience can now relocate to Canada. And then all of a sudden it became competitive with the provinces and things like that coming into the province, it became competitive. So I think the hype now came from scarcity to a certain extent, also the quality of what people know that they can get. So it's, you know, it's one of the easiest countries in the advanced countries to move to. You don't were to come here to school no problem if you were to come here to school for instance you don't need to look for an employer or you have a 
postgraduate work permit that you get regardless. And once you fulfill all the requirements, you can become a permanent resident. That's how someone like myself became a permanent resident without any employer. So those are things that make Canada compared to like any other country, UK, you know, US, you get one year. And if you don't have a job at a certain level, you can't even convert that. So those things, it's it's much more flexible. It's easier um, for people if you meet all the requirements. And you can also go from your home country directly as a permanent resident compared to any other country where you need to come in first or you need to be married and all mm -hmm. of those other things. So that's what makes Canada different. And that's why the hype, because you still get the same quality of life, but it's easier compared to other countries. Okay, so what you're telling me basically is that um, they are very open to young people you know, and the the there are their laws, their immigration laws are quite um lenient. It's not very tight for people. And then you yes. have like the permanent residency that you is the express entry visa that you can actually become a resident. Um, so so, that, so 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 permanent residency is what everybody gets if you go as a permanent resident. Express entry is just a system where somebody can get permanent residency. There are other pathways that still lead to permanent residency. Express entry is one of those pathways. Okay. That takes you there, yeah. Okay, so so what are the career options that are actually really booming there? Like what okay. are the opportunities that are really booming there for like young Nigerians? considering the world that we live in right now i'd like you to answer that question then i'll ask a very specific question anyway but like okay. what are the, the the career options that are waiting for them there because people want to go where they are actually appreciated where their value is actually you know wanted and needed so i would say that basically any career that you have a background in or you can grow into or you can get a certification in is open to you there are, maybe there are a few things like you cannot go and contest for a counselor at least not right away when you get into the province uh, or a mayor and things like that but any other career options that you're interested in you can do right so um and i say that you know carefully also because you need to put in your work like any other place you need to put in the work to understand how things work in canada when i came in and i finished my masters i got a job with the bank like three months within three months and i started working in in 20 for 15 because i finished my masters at the end of august i moved to a different province from where i finished and then i started working in january of 2015 and most people when they found out the kind of job i was doing were surprised because they're like oh you're not supposed to get that kind of job like you're supposed to get a lower job because that was their own experience but i had a different mentor who had said no like it's in fact he made it so he belittled in a certain way, like it was the easiest thing you could get. And it taught me exactly what to do. So that made a difference. So who you're listening to when you come into a place like this is very important. There are people that have had negative experiences. There are people that have had to start from the very scratch, you know, who had very, you know, long years of work experience, you know, um, you know, really good, solid years of work experience. But somebody else will tell you, you don't need to now start from the beginning. So it depends on who you're listening to. So is there any career path that is open to you? Yes. But you need to make sure that you're listening to the right people. Do your networking. Understand how it works here. Understand the requirements. So this is why I tell people, do not be desperate when you're in Nigeria. Yes, there's so many frustrating things. But the moment you start your immigration process, that's when you need to start thinking. Um, there's so many jobs, especially with COVID. With Even before COVID, we started seeing a lot of this. But COVID now yeah. made it so prominent that... The digital space is booming. You know, the marketing space is booming. What can you do? What skills can you do? Like, what can you learn? And all of these things do not require you to go to school for one year. These are certificate courses you can take. Google has so many. There was a time during COVID last year that Google made... Um, you know, all of their courses available. Are you learning? Are you developing your skills? Are you earning your skills? Like, there's so many things that you can do, you know whether it's banking, whether it is um, the IT space, whether whatever it is, whether it's in, it's in the engineering space, you just need to look at it. What are the four thinking career paths that is that exist? What are the skill gaps that I have? You know, obviously you can't go into a field that you don't have 
you know, some basics. You must have some basics that you can then transfer into. You know, I was reading a story of a of a pharmacist yesterday who just transferred into IT. You know, so it is very possible. A friend of mine just moved into IT. He's an engineer, a petroleum engineer, but because of the way oil and gas has been, he's now potted into IT, learned how to code and all of those things. So it really depends on you coming in, looking at, even before you come in, what is available to you and the sky is your starting point. You just need to be able to know exactly what it is. Be patient, put in the work, and get things going from there. Yeah. Mm. Sounds great. The way you are saying it, it sounds like it is so much of a land of opportunities for just anyone who have built themselves well enough. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, if you've just done the, the work on yourself, then you can actually just put yourself strategically and you'll get something good. Absolutely. And we had a series last year where we said um, um, a series where we were, it was called Connecting You to Industry Professionals in Canada. We brought people, mm -hmm. Nigerians specifically, from different fields who were doing well, who were earning six figures in their different areas. And some of them have been here for only two years. Some of them have been here for only three it's years. years you know? In no, a no, year. yeah, yeah, hundred thousand dollars in a year, um, and some of them have been here for two years, some of them three years, some of them four years, right? But these are where all young people that people can relate to to show them that it is possible, and every one of them had, you know, the the same similar you know in terms of you need to network you need to know exactly what you want you need to find out when you get into canada don't just associate yourself and as nigerians as africans we're very rugged like when it comes to our determination like we're very persistent we know we we can so if we take that doggedness and that persistence and we now apply it in, into the area of our career there's nothing we cannot do we can go over and, and beyond you know anything else because it's an opportunity. There's there's so many opportunities. It's just how you position yourself. And with those professionals, a lot of people came into our DMs and were like, thank you. I've been so afraid of this journey. You know, I've heard so many things, but this has given me, because one of the things people hear is, oh, I'm going to come in and come and, you know, wash plates. You know, I'm going to come in here and come and do this. And, you know, people hear and people come and, and it's the reality. And I'm not saying that maybe, maybe you may need to do that while you're in school. You know, you're making side money or you're doing something part-time, but that's not the end of the world we had um a guest last week and was like oh my friend came in here she's doing cleaning job just as a way to um just the first three months that she came and she's transitioning into something else so it depends on what you're doing and what the goal is it's not about so much of what am i doing right now it is what is my goal you know what is my goal am i pursuing some people are in school so you can't afford to even work full-time so you're doing you know this something part-time but the goal is what matters the most Okay, so let, let me ask, still in the context of um, of um, corporate jobs, how much, like, what's, what's the minimum requirement of experience that you need for you to be in a better place when you get to Canada? So if you're coming in as a permanent residency, uh, sorry, as a permanent resident, um, yes. you'll most likely have at least one year experience in reality more, 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 most, most likely two years minimum is what you're yeah. having you know because at least you need that even if you have family here to be able to qualify unless you're going to certain provinces you know so but at least one year so now when you come in again it depends on what kind of field that you're going into if you have um if you don't have a lot of experience, then you're most likely looking at entry-level jobs. Now, when I say entry-level jobs, entry-level jobs can be like you're starting as a, um, if you're in the banking sector, like um, retail banking, you're starting mm -hmm. as a financial services representative, which is like maybe equivalent of what a relationship officer would be. So you don't need to go and start from a cashier, mm -hmm. you know, if you already have a degree. Because most of those cashiers that you see are students, people who are going to school and they're working part-time. So you are people that didn't go to school at all. So you don't need to go and start from there, even though that's what the reality of what most people will tell you, you need to start, but you don't need to start. Your entry-level job is actually the professional start at, on, in retail banking. If you're going to commercial banking, for instance, you're starting as a trainee, a business manager trainee that's where you're starting off from because they train you to now be an account manager you know if you're starting from most likely you may not be able to start from investment banking 
if you don't have any experience if you're an accountant and let's say maybe you did acc and you've just converted into your cpa in canada you can start up as a cpa like an entry-level accounting role and an entry-level accounting role all things being equal is about 60 to even sixty-five thousand dollars as an entry-level person you know and then you're now moving into and, and the retail banking i told you entry level is around forty thousand. commercial banking is around 55 60 depending on your you know your negotiation skills and and then if you're going into um it you can start up as a database analyst you know as an it person and depending on the company depending on whether it's remote because a lot of database analyst roles are remote you can start up at fifty thousand dollars but it's remote so you're working from home so you there's still flexibility you can take a part-time job if you want it so it really yeah. depends on what field you're going into so entry level can vary you know people who are obviously in the it the tech world you know they have more um you know more things available to them you know accountants you know people are also professionals have more things available to them you know it now depends on how fast you can assimilate but you're looking at anywhere between forty thousand dollars to eighty thousand dollars as a starting role depending on your field yeah, I was actually laughing at someone who said, see, which is space, just because they mentioned $6,000. <laughs> you know, what I'm actually even thinking about is not just the money you are mentioning. What I'm thinking about is the way you are speaking with so much assurance about a workable system or a working system. Do you understand? Like, I'm sorry, it's sad. We can't say these things about Nigeria. Like, you come out of school, you study microfinance, uh, not microfinance, microbiology, the next thing you're working in the bank. You know, yeah. like, so, but the way you are actually, like, basically, it's not even about, I, I feel like when sometimes when people relocate from Nigeria, many people are not really relocating just because of, of money. Mm -hmm. People are relocating because of assurance, because of um, a working system. Yes. You understand me? Like, they know that if I put in this, I'll get this out for sure. Yeah. So that that's even why I'm even thinking because this country, this country can change your destiny. So anyway, <laughs> guys, before we actually continue, if you have, I'm, I think I'm actually going to take like maybe three questions. What do you think? Three questions from people who are listening. Yeah, right? yeah we can take questions well, from what, them. Yeah, like yeah. three or four questions. Just drop them while I, I actually ask this next question. So now I ask that like in the context of corporate work, right? Yeah. Now let's talk about creatives like me okay people like me now because me i don't have a, five, a nine to five and i don't think it's the life that i want for myself right not i don't think i'm actually very very i think I, sure. I don't want it. yes i don't want it right mm -hmm. so what uh i have asked one of my friends this question and she could not answer me i'm like canada is sure i actually want to relocate to canada this year hopefully but the thing is what is the opportunity that I would have as a freelancer, someone who wants to be an independent worker? Maybe as I studied journalism in school, maybe as a journalist, maybe I develop my, I, I, I take up my life coaching, um, um, what's it called, portfolio and all of that stuff. Basically, what are the opportunities we have as creatives, people who are not like doing nine to five? You know how like there's been a very, you know, surge in um, non-conventional career path doesn't have to be yeah. doctor, doesn't have to be all of that stuff. So what 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 opportunities are there opportunities for people like us? So I would say there are. I mean, I'm a full time entrepreneur myself, you know, um, and I'm also in the creative or in the in the film space other than this. And there are opportunities again, if you don't want to work for somebody, you're already doing it. You know, you're already using your platform. As a, as a space, you know, even in the film industry, for instance, they look at before they can take you on as a producer, part of the things they look at is your following. Your following makes a difference because wow. that's the kind of world we live in, in, in today's world, because they want to make sure that when they are investing money into you, you have a platform. So I think that what you're already doing right now is what you're doing, like you're already building your platform. So in terms of, you know, the earning capacity of obviously a Canadian business may be a bit more than the Nigerian businesses who may be your, your clientele right now. So I would say that it's more about just adding those Canadian businesses, you know, tweaking or not tweaking, well, whatever it is, but making sure you're now appealing to the audience in Canada or in North America because Canada, you know, in the creative space might be a bit small. So you want to maybe extend it to the North American 
audience as a whole, you know, because there's a whole lot of space out there for, you know, that you can expand to. And starting yourself with Canadian businesses, for instance, you know, you're a writer, you're a ghost writer, you can write for several blogs, you know, you can start contributing to the Yahoo, um, you know, maybe in relationship, because I see you talk about a lot of relationship, you know, and start putting a lot of things out there. An article on Yahoo, for instance, is minimum, I think about $300 or $500 just for one blog um, article, you know, so yeah. those are things that, you know, is that you can start contributing to, um, even there are businesses that need help in terms of, you know, creating a, an online presence. It just now depends on how you want to now position yourself. Do you want to work with businesses? Do you want to work with just other, um, business? Again, there are so many things in the influencer world that, is not location bound per se. So okay. if you're now in the Canadian market, you now find that, okay, now I can now target a lot of Canadian businesses who want to use my platform, you know, to create things, you know. So I think for someone like you, you've already created your atmosphere, you know, on the online space because you're not bound by being in Canada. It's just now yeah. transferring that and making sure that you're not earning in dollars to compensate for a different living cost. Okay, now I'll ask you this question before I ask someone's question in the, in the, in the comments, right? Um, before I ask, because I wrote down questions that I wanted to ask you. So I would ask, you know, in Nigeria, we have a disparity between HND holders and BSC holders, yeah. right? And because someone has actually asked me this question before, what, is it possible to actually get admission into a Canadian university to do your master's or what like is it possible to basically apply for student visa with hnd yes absolutely so every school their requirements are different so we i think we made a post was it last week or two weeks ago about this um hnd holders can you come in for a master's yes you can obviously not all the schools are open to that um you know for you to some would require you to do some some courses you know to be able to um go into your master's right because here hnd is an equivalent of going to a trade school and you know so a trade school will be a technical school so technical schools are more focused on practical than on the academic yeah. so and masters is more academic than it is practical you know so they sometimes they will require to just do some courses preparatory courses to meet up and some schools don't even care mostly some schools will look at your experience again it depends on the field so they will look at your experience they will look at some schools your experience would would have more weighting than the actual degree itself. And so those it's, it's a combination. It, it just really depends. You need to look out for the schools that are actually interested in working with someone like you. But on the visa end, there's no, there's no discrimination at all. The most yeah. important thing is you're putting your application in the way it's supposed to be. You're putting a solid application together and that's all that really matters. The way you're saying this thing there, uh... <laughs> It's like I'll be in Canada by this time next year. I'll be in snow. I'll be taking pictures. Amen. Of snow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be taking pictures of snow. I'll just say, people, I have. You, you're not gonna be taking pictures. <laughs> no, I know yes. your 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 fine your fine boy no pimples will, will grow because there will be no yes. no uh, no heat anymore. So exactly. you just go like, the cool oh weather. God, I'll, just be, I'll just be popping. Somebody asked in the somebody asked in the comments anyway, and that person I really want to ask because. There are people who are not so privileged. Somebody asked, "Can what?" I think the person asked, "What is the opportunity for people who, who are SSCE holders? Is there are there opportunities for people like that in Canada?" Um, there are opportunities, um, but in terms of immigration as a permanent resident, um, that would be close to impossible um, to relocate. Um, that's the reality because they give you. Um, it's a points-based system. So for your education they'll give you points for your work experience, they'll give you points for your age, they'll give you points for your IELTS, you know, and French examinations, they'll give you points. So if you don't have an education, to be honest, like we don't even want to say you don't have an education, we can't, we don't even do a consultation with you because, you know, your chances unless you're willing to come as a student, you know, if you're not willing to come as a student, you would need to get a job, you know, and getting a job from Nigeria 
I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's very, very tough. You know, we've just been an SSE holder. So if you really want to come to Canada, it's a matter of, depending on your age, can you go back to school? Um, at least and get a BSc, you know, or OND, um, an HND. You know, there are ways around this now that you can do an, an, an OND and a second certificate, you know, to combine it. But the chances without schooling, I would say it's close to impossible. Mm, okay. So someone said um, that what province is the best or will you recommend? Well, a lot of people like to go to Ontario. Ontario because it's the biggest. A lot of people are like, ah, there's so much life in Toronto and all it's of that. But the reality... too, too shaky, so I don't really like to get <laughs> You know, because they're posh, you know, they have a lot of monies, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, big. Yeah. <laughs> but um but but Toronto, like Ontario is the I think I think the most expensive. Ontario and British Columbia, they're the most expensive province. I don't know which one is number one, maybe Ontario or BC. Um it's very expensive, right? So again, you need to balance um the cost of living with you know what you really want to get for those who have families um i know so many people that have families that are in ontario I, I personally i don't live there so different people i know a lot of people that have moved i'm in calgary alberta and i know a lot of people that have moved from you know from toronto or even anywhere in the ontario to calgary because they're like the cost of living is just way too much you know family people that have moved. I would say as a single person, you can live in Ontario because, you know, you're single, it's bubbly, you know, but you also have to balance the cost of living. You have to know that if you're living in Ontario, you're most likely going to spend double cost of living than in a place like Calgary, you know, in a place like Calgary. So you just have to be aware of that. And in today's world where remote work is the in thing, where you can be in your in another place and be earning your cool money and your cost of living is low, you just need to wisen up, you know, um, and just think about that properly. So I would not say, I'll say that obviously for me, you know, it really, and it now also depends. If you're young and you're coming through the extra century, you can live anywhere. So you can choose wherever you want to live. You're not bound. But if you need to come through a province, which is the mistake a lot of people made a few years ago, they're like, I don't want to go to Saskatchewan. You you know, because I heard it's much, much, much colder and it's not Ontario. And they made that mistake and now they are struggling because they can't even come again at all. Exactly. And they would have come in. Yeah. So so don't say I want to live in this province, but because Saskatchewan is inviting me, I don't want to go. You are making a very big mistake because ask people two, three years ago who had those opportunities and didn't, and didn't take it. So I would say that again, it depends. You know, I've considered living in Ontario. Um, I went there one day to visit Toronto and I was just like, no, this is like Lagos. And I told myself I'm not coming back. You know, so again, it really depends on what's important to you. Um, there's so many provinces that are lively. I'll say Calgary, Edmonton, um, Toronto and then the GTS is filled with a lot of people now compared to before a lot of Nigerians a lot of Africans a lot of you know people from different different diverse backgrounds so you will still have from wherever you stay um the provinces that are a bit quiet would be obviously um Nova Scotia is also good because there are quite a a number of Nigerians and Africans that have now settled mm -hmm. into the province but provinces that are a bit quiet will be like the Prince Edward Island the um Newfoundland um uh, Manitoba no, Saskatchewan yeah We're so this provinces, yes these provinces can be quite quiet um in terms of people and all of that so if you're a young person unless immigration pathway takes you there I would not necessarily say you know that would be my first choice for you to go as a young but person. then if you have the opportunity to go there but it's if you have the opportunity there. it's better to go there stay for two years and move out you know afterwards exactly so the next question someone someone asked them um, can one set up their own business in canada absolutely so if you come in there are different ways so there's business like i mentioned to you at the beginning we have business migration so business migration obviously this will be for like people in their late 30s 40s that may not be able to qualify through the normal pathway to come to Canada and they have the money to come and establish their own businesses so they can use that pathway to come. You know, however, if you're just saying, I just want to come to Canada um, just the regular way and come and set up my own business, you can. So again, with any other thing, um, we have a show coming up, I think next 
next month, I think in March, you know, where we had one of the people we interviewed for that show who came in and became a business owner right away. And she oh, wow. didn't wait because she's like, yes, if I had waited, I would have grown a cold feet and I, maybe I would not um, be able to start it up again. So she started her business, went into, you know, immigration centers for business owners and she got a lot of skills, you know, got her start some basic starting capital, knew how to set up a business plan. And she started from there and started growing her business. So there are opportunities to grow your business. However, if you're coming in as a single person, you don't have you know, a full support um, system. She was able to do that because obviously she had savings and things like that. If you don't have a full support system, I'll say there's no crime. Work part-time. Do something you know, until you're able to get yourself up and you can now run a business because running a business you have to learn so many things you know whether you're running a business in nigeria in canada there's so much to learn and with a place like this you know where the cost of uh, labor is high you need to make sure that you are fully acute before you start running your business full-time so yes is it possible absolutely and as a permanent resident you're not restricted you can work for somebody you can work for yourself you can go to school those are all the advantages that you have Mm. So before I even answer the next question, because you are spilling so much sense. So like, honestly, like my conviction to actually relocate to Canada is, is coming stronger, stronger. Like, do you I'm have like, personal, do you have personal sessions, personal consultation sessions and yeah. what rates, you know, what, what are the rates and all of that? Like, how can people reach out to you and your company? Because yeah. I, I know that a lot of people would have questions, you know, and they might need prof professional consultation, not just, you know, you know all of this yes so you can book a consultation with us um you know we have our team on the dms you know you can call us we have our numbers on on our bio whatsapp number for nigerians or you can call us directly on our canadian line and you can also reach us on the dm consultations are for 30 minutes you can book 15 minutes our website is being reworked now but right now it's open you can also ask us 30 minutes for people that are already even doing the application or maybe just have some people are diy they love to do it themselves yeah. you know so if you're that kind of a person and you just like i just have a quick question you know um while i'm doing this my application i've received an invitation i need this you can book a 15 minutes call get your quick questions answered if you're just like okay i need a bit more i need to get an information it's 30 minutes 30 minutes is what our standard consultation is and to an extent most people have been they've gotten everything they needed to at least know where to start from um and then if you say okay i really have a long topic you know and things like that or i want to review my application for instance you can do a one hour um, consultation and over that one hour we'll look at whatever questions you want to ask um within you know the context of immigration or relocation we're able to answer you so consultation is um thirty-five thousand or one hundred dollars for thirty minutes. Um, for fifteen minutes is um seventeen five or fifty dollars, and for an hour is two hundred dollars or um seventy thousand naira. Like I said, thirty minutes is mostly what people use right now. Okay, so I think yeah go for and we have a discount but the discount ends on sunday you know so we have a discount for 30 percent yeah. off which is twenty four thousand five hundred or seventy dollars yeah. um mm -hmm. up until sunday so by sunday you know by monday it's it reverts back to the regular rate hey guys you guys should rush your boats if i pay now and uh, will i will, will you be able to link me up to a woman that will like me 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 I, the money is not my problem <laughs> I want, I, I want to you so that, uh, you know, do you understand me? But you said Toronto Babe just did you a strong thing now. <laughs> Don't worry. I will, I will take care of that. Uh, no, so we can't, we cannot link you up to a Babe. If you okay, have but linked, if I get up, linked up already, I can now. Uh -huh, if you get linked up, yes, we can help you with the spouser um, sponsorship. We can help you put the application together. And if you wanted to come and start working or anything, we can get you a, we can also work on your visitor's visa, you know, get you into Canada first and then start your spouser application from Canada so that you can start, you can apply for open work permits, you know, and, and have the opportunity to at least legally work within the yeah, system. No problem. I know that this December, Lord, the, sorry, this, this, this um, Valentine. This Lord Valentine. Everybody, Lord okay, go and jump into his DM or he's asking you to come. <laughs> Canadian <Canadian's> day. <Anyway, laughs> guys, please, because 
people are always people can come to my games and ask me questions that i really do not know anything and i actually understand that yeah because of my influence and the things that i do you know so i'm actually recommending shira immigration go to their dms book for their sessions they have a discount going on right now from everything she's been saying here like i see so much genuineness like trying to help people because there's something i notice you know with some people when they have good stuff they don't want to share with other people like there are people that have spoken about about canada with like a couple of years ago and they made me feel like it's very it's so impossible it's so hard you know and i'm like ah. But when I now started, like, you know, maybe because I like to research a lot, I now started seeing that it's not necessarily that way. My next question would be, um, is IELTS mm -hmm. and TEF a must? Is it, is it really compulsory that you need to do this? Um, you need to have these um, exams, like, the results? So short answer, yes and no. So yes, if you want to come into Canada as a permanent resident, IELTS... You know, so IELTS is for English, TEF is Canada, uh, is for French. So they are mm -hmm. both the exams that you need to write. So people that are from that their first language is French would write TEF. You know, people that their first language is English or whichever one, or people that are bilingual, whichever one you're more comfortable with, you write the IELTS. Now, um, or if you're already in Canada or you're in the US, I know some people may be in different parts of the world, even though this was targeted for Africans, but some people may be, if you're in, in those places, is, there are also other approved um, exams that you can also do um, for the immigration. So now, with um, IELTS, if you're if you're from an English speaking place, definitely it is compulsory if you want to relocate as a permanent resident. You cannot come into Canada. So if somebody is out there telling you come to Canada without IELTS as a permanent resident, just know that you should run very far because it's impossible. Now. Um, with the fact that there's an age barrier, I mentioned an age barrier, you know, which younger people are now the ones. What we're seeing is people with a master's with three years work experience at 32, you're already cut off, like based on the points. You you can't, most people can't get an invitation because you're just stuck there with, you know, with the points. So what French can do is, because you can do two languages and you get points for both. You can be, is regarded as a bilingual, um, you're regarded as a bilingual person. So if you take the French as a way to boost your points you can yeah. go and you have a master's you can go up to 41 years so people that are up to 41 yeah. that friend makes it different on the extra century now if you're even above 41 places like saskatchewan that are giving points can even give you an opportunity to even immigrate even at 45 even at 46 because we have somebody who is doing the ielts now that is 46 but based on the points that we calculated we're like okay you have a shot if you can score this and and all of that so so again it's really open um to up to that age and then places like even ontario they are inviting people from the extra century pool that are french speakers so french speaking has opened up compared to like before because canada is saying we have we're a bilingual country so we want to open up opportunities for french speaking people so french is that differentiator if you're trying to boost your points and this is what i tell people you know some people are like okay i don't want to struggle to write french but are you ready to pay, to pay forty thousand dollars for school are you ready to pay for for a postgraduate are you ready to pay sixty thousand dollars for school or would you rather stay in nigeria study for french for six months nine months whatever that looks like for you and now proceed so it really depends on you what your goal is the cost of doing french in nigeria or in your country can be like maybe maximum even if you're taking private classes whatever it is maybe an extra three thousand dollars plus the plus the writing of the exam itself. Mm -hmm. But then compared to 40000 compared with $60,000, I always tell people, do you want to take that money and come and start up your life or you want to take that money and take it, put it into the system and go to school? I came here as a student, so I, I always say, I'm not trying to discourage you. I paid $35,000 for one year of school. You know, and when I look back, I've never used that master's. Never. Mm. Wow. So, so, <laughs> so... <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so so someone, someone was actually asking, are they, are they um Canadian Canada like are they licensed in Canada? Yeah, they are actually licensed. Yes, we are. We are licensed in Canada. You can go and check us on the ICCRC website. Oh, wow. Uh, and then um, 
there's a question I wanted to ask. Is it that I've forgotten? Okay, but le let me take this question from someone in the comments. The person said, how feasible is medical practice in Canada for international medical graduates? So international med, there's a process. Um, I don't know if we, I don't think, we don't have the video anymore, but maybe we'll upload them on YouTube. We had a medical doctor come in um, when we had our session. And part of the things he said was, there's a process. It's not just the one thing fits all, but part of your process before you even get into Canada is connect with other medical doctors, understand how the system works, you know, because it's a different system. You have to, you know, it's like re-regulating yourself, re-licensing yourself, and that can take a two to four, five year process before you actually begin to practice again. So would you be able to, we, we also have on the show that we have coming up, we have a medical doctor who owns a practice and have, and she's Nigerian and has 15 doctors working for her as a clinic so but then it, it didn't just happen overnight so you mm -hmm. have to be you know decide if you want to go that pathway of waiting two to five years because yes it's very rewarding doctors are the most paid doctors lawyers you know they make they take all our money away basically um so you you just have to decide and there are other pathways you know beyond practicing unless you're like you know, insisting that you must go the pathway of becoming a medical doctor again. The other pathways, you know, just the same thing I tell lawyers, right? You don't have to say, unless you're like really, really keen that I really want to practice as, a, you know, a lawyer that can go to court. But if not, as a doctor, that so many health pathways that you can go to. There's public health, you know, there's funding, there's research, um, you know, you can work as an administrator in the hospital. But again, if going back to being a, law, a doctor, doctor is your thing, then by all means be ready to pay the dues that is required. Okay, so let me, let me ask two questions. Number one is you keep on talking about how, like, like it seems as, as though you have more... Um, should I say more point there'll be more opportunities as a younger person, right? So like what age range is quite very interesting, very sellable as young people. Because me you now I'm thinking I'm I'm young, I'm twenty I will be twenty six this year. I hope that my chances are not low. No, your chances are not low. Um I would say like I said, even people up to the age of forty six even 40 even again if you're open to the provinces can come to canada but the requirements now begin to differ as you go along so if you are if you're in your early if you're in your 20s in your early 30s i would say 31 32 that's a sweet spot you have a master's or two certificates you know expert century is a pathway that can allow you to come either directly from the federal government or being invited by province to apply now if you're above that age then you're looking at provincial options for the most part um, and then if you're in your late 30s early 40s you will most likely have to either consider french or business migration so it just your pathways there's opportunity even up to 50 like i said with saskatchewan with the fact that they introduced 10 points for french you can write french if you score your 10 points which you don't need even need to be on the is band add it to your potential points which is around 66 you had 76 points so if they do have 76 points draw and you're 50 then guess what? You're going to get invited, right? But then you have to be willing to do French or you have to be willing to come and invest. So if you want to come under the business immigration pathway, we have someone we're working with right now. And business immigration, um, depending on what which pathway that you're trying to do, can cost you about, um, you know, $300,000, you know, in investment. But this is obviously for people that have the capacity to come and invest into a business, already run a business in Nigeria. So again, it really depends. It's just that the, the older you get, you have to be willing to do extra work if you really want to come. And what I do tell people is, if you don't want to do all this extra work, then come to school in Canada because school in Canada is not selective. You know, you can be a student at any age um, and still come to school in Canada. Yeah. Hmm. So I still have opportunity to meet my, my Canadian baby. Of course. <laughs> you people think I'm playing. I'm not playing. You will be shocked. My, my IV will just be out. So somebody actually asked, um, can a person migrate to Canada with a degree certificate and two years work experience with English language certificate from the degree school? I don't really understand that question, but yeah. 
that I can't even answer because there's so much <laughs> involved in that question. Okay. Okay. So um, I think I'll just take two more questions and and then we'll call it a day. Um, somebody asked. Uh, okay, no. Somebody asked. Um, let's check. Okay, so let me ask this question. Actually, can you apply for express entry with H and D? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, you know, H and D holders are, you know, when it comes to immigration, they have more points than a BSc holder. You know, uh, yeah, why? because H and D has O and D and H and D. That's two certificates. But BSc, mm. you just have BSc, just one certificate. So oh, yeah. for immigration. You know, for, for, for immigration, when somebody comes to us with a BSc, we still have to tell them to go and take a second certificate. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. an HND that, depending on your age, can start right away. Oh, wow. Okay. One last question before we go. I'm actually good. For people that are joining late, don't worry. I'm posting the live video. I'll post you watch it. And also, somebody asked me in the, in, in the comments that... Um, for how long would the, uh, would the discount be? How, how long? Is it this Sunday? Is this Sunday. Because we've had it for almost three weeks now. Oh, for almost three weeks. Yeah. So, guys, you actually have to pay. You need to pay. I'm Zimbabwean. Do you also process for or just for only Nigerians? No, it's for Africans. No, we process for everywhere. I mean, we're based in Canada, right? So, it doesn't matter where you are. We can help you. And that's why we, you know, this is, is for Africans. So, please, DM, as long as you speak English, we can help you. Okay. I see, the, the fact is that, the fact is that um, there are so many questions coming in and we cannot handle all of that here because it's not a consultation session. But, Thank you so much. I have, I trust me, I have personally learned. This is not even like hyping or anything. Like you have opened my eye, and I think that instead of me to save money and relocate to Abuja, I think I'll just travel out so that by next year we start in picture with snow or with snow. With <laughs> and you do snowman for Christmas. Exactly. That's the thing. That's the life. I, that's what me I want. <laughs> But, but yeah, actually, I have, like, you have really, I like the way you are breaking things down. Like, you're not speaking too much grammar. You are, like, relating it to people to understand. And I see they need to pay you to pay your, your company for this thing, like, real. So, guys, thank you so much for joining. Too many questions that we cannot answer here. Do well to actually run into their DM, book a session, follow them, um, and all of that, so that you will actually relocate to Canada. This country... Well, let me not talk about the country. Just for people that want to relocate to Canada, let's not talk about Nigeria. If you want to relocate to Canada, this is actually a very good thing for you. And, you know, she said something very striking because not, not a lot of Nigeria... You know that we have, a, like, issues with disparity between BH, uh, BC, B, BSC and HND in Nigeria, right? And it's even more interesting that you are saying that, you know, a HND holder has more, um, you know, more points for the express entry so now see if you're on this live video and you know people that have hnd because many times hnd holders actually like underrate themselves you yes. know because of the system like ah i'm just hnd holder you know and all of that and, and let me more add to let me add to that right you know here in nigeria or in africa we 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 kind of mock people that are handy, that use their hands to work. But here, yeah. in Canada, they are the ones that make, you see, skilled trades people. They can come to your house to come and fix a light and charge you $150 per hour. Oh, wow. To come and fix your light, to come and fix something. Like, just because they came, whether they find the fault or not, the fact that they came, they will charge you. So here, there's no, the quality of life for everybody. I work, when I worked at the bank as a retail, I remembered seeing so many paychecks. You know, you see so many people's paychecks and you're just like, and it was at that point, I'm like, Bookie, are you sure you're in the right profession? You know, because you see, I saw a plumber, a 23-year-old plumber, and he was already thinking about buying a house because he had over, you know, close to $60,000 in savings. And I was just like, a 23-year-old, because of how much here again because you go to school as a plumber you go to a, a proper school like you go to a trade school for one year for two years you can learn it's like an apprent apprentice apprenticeship program you know yeah. you learn under somebody also and then you become better so here everybody 
you know, to an, like I always say, like, even if you choose, like, I'm not the professional type, I only want to do, um, you know, something very basic. People that work at stores, that work at any of these places, they still have enough income to still buy a home. You will buy mm -hmm. according to the size of your bank account, according to the size, but everybody can own a home basically you know, with your income, because there's something for somebody. You can buy a one-bedroom condo, if that's what you can qualify for. You can buy a two-bedroom condo, you know. Yeah. You don't have to buy a house. So there's something for everyone, and handiwork pays a lot, because if you want to go to the salon, that's why a lot of us go and learn DIY. You see all these ladies doing I DIY, come and learn how to... It's not because that they just want to be DIY. It's because they, they pay to go and pay somebody to make your hair. It's like $150. And by the time you look at it, every two, three weeks, you're paying $150. You just be like, you give yourself sense and you're like, okay, let me learn or let me learn how to wear. So that's why these things are, you know, they are expensive because again cost of labor it, it has to equate to somebody that works in a professional job if not even more okay thank you so much ah you have said a lot and people are actually really appreciating in the comments thank you so much shira um, shira migration not immigration shira migration um thank you so much this was a very enlightening very educative session thank you everyone that actually joined i'm so impressed with people that joined do well to tag your friends. By the time I post the live video, I'm going to post it. And hopefully we get to like do more of these live videos and sessions where we help Nigerians leave this country to a place that their future can be safe. Um, anyway, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> thank nice you so much. You. You have a wonderful time. And you too. Take care. Bye, yeah, everyone. Yeah, yeah bye.